I'll just title the sermon or my remarks tonight more than just a thank you. I want to direct my remarks to Calvary, to all these wonderful folks. Sister Nina has already acknowledged so many of you that have labored, not just in this past ladies' conference, but labored hard this year in many different areas. I'm not going to try to name everything, but in the last two or three years even, we've had a large number of memorial services, conferences, meetings, and so much going on. Thank you for being servants. I want to talk to you about that, being a servant. But I want to say that being a servant, it's a good thing to serve. God gets in it when you're serving. He gets in your life. He blesses you. But I want to tell you that this whole thing of serving God, being faithful, being faithful within the church, within the body of Christ, being faithful as servants, all the things that we do together, the labors I know you know that I would miss something if I tried to list everything, but just to give you a broad concept, I want you to just embrace the numbers of people here, teaching, janitors, parking lot people, secretaries, people that deal with the finances, people that deal our boards, our leadership, that help us with coming to grips with changes and dealing with situations, our schools. Brother Barkas and the family, and Brother and Sister Rodenbush and the whole team. And then our outreach churches, Brother Lopez, Brother Lopez is here tonight. The church is growing, thank God. We have four or five Spanish churches now under Calvary Tabernacle. And uh, other churches, our African church continues to grow. And let's pray for all of these efforts. And it takes people serving, 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 doing, going. You're a servant. You're a servant. Servants everywhere. But not just on the platform, but so many. And Anina, you said it right. You said it right. Sometimes, Brother Rodenbush, we have sickness with Brother Rodenbush, and we have sickness with Brother Anderson. We're under attack sometimes, but we just keep on keeping on. But I'm going to tell you that there's something more to this servanthood than just doing things and getting things done that need to be done. There's an eternal component to it. There is a divine reason for it and it plays a role in your life and in the life of the church as we're going to see Jesus himself emphasizing this thing called being a servant. And we're blessed. I think you'd be, now there are many great churches, but you'd be hard pressed to find a church anywhere in this country, specifically maybe in the world, that has over decades given themselves to serving, serving, serving. Some of you go back to the days when this church was broadcasting harvest time from these very facilities, or at least the old facilities, reaching 800 radio stations every week, staying up way past midnight to go do it live, to do it live down at the studios. You didn't even think about going to bed to about one o'clock in the morning. The restaurants were still jammed with Calvary people at midnight. What was the place on the south side everybody liked to go to in the north side? Not the Dutch oven. You're way too young for this. To stay out of this. This goes back to the teepee. They begged us to go home. Some of us that were independent churches, like our church, my little church, we hated Calvary. You couldn't get into a restaurant. I'm not serious about the word hate. I'm just trying to be cute.
being a servant is an important thing. My expressions to you tonight will be more than just a thank you. I hope you'll listen closely. By the way, golf tournament, Merrick, you did a good job. And I see a number here. You raised about $4,773 in the golf tournament for the Theology Club. Great big hand to the Faulkners and Brother Kilman. And, well, that was all going on while the ladies was here. I dashed here to see the ladies and then went out and shot a, some golf and then came back. And they never knew that I played golf in the process. It's like, I'm a busy pastor. All right, you're standing, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 24. Know this. Now, I, there's, uh, my thought is going to come out of a concept that really requires a lot of reading and thought. And so I'm going to give you the basic principles here and the ideas so that I can condense uh, my thoughts and not keep you here all night. And by the way, one of the reasons why we're having the, the principal reason we're canceling on Wednesday night is just our staff, and not just the staff, but many of you as families probably need to get out of this place for a few days. So no Wednesday night service. And then our ministers, of course, will be at the conference. And gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to meet with me up on the higher level uh, after service as soon as possible. But know this, Matthew 24, verse 43. Know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken into. In other words, if the man who was in charge of taking care of the house and making sure that no one broke in, nothing was stolen and so forth, if he had stayed on his watch, there would have been no need for the thief to uh, no, the, the thief could not have succeeded verse 44 wherefore be you ready you don't know when the thief is going to come that means you got to pay attention all the time right be you ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh who then is a faithful and wise servant whom the Lord hath made ruler over the household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant. Now God is speaking to us here and Jesus is trying to help us to understand his mission, his purpose is to make us spiritually ready at any time and giving us an assignment. And the assignment is rather simple, even though this is some of the most complex parts of the Bible, which I'm not going to try to break it down into prophetic things, just I'm trying to show you that in the middle of all of these elements of what the last days are going to be like, how the spirit of the Antichrist and all these things, here Jesus then comes to the church and says, look, let me tell you something. We would say it as modern people would say, we don't know when he's coming and he's not going to tell us when he's going to come and we will never know precisely when he's going to come. No man knoweth the time or the hour, but be ready. It's like you don't know exactly when the thief might come. And in the same idea, Jesus says, you don't know when I'm going to come. But blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, findeth, when he cometh, findeth so doing. Verily I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over over his goods. If he comes back, if the boss comes back to the house, the good man of the house, the owner of the house, and you the servant, if you are doing your job and watching and you're protecting the household, the good man of the house, the person you're working for is going to say, good job, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying on the job. Everybody say in Jesus' name, you may be seated. So allow me tonight to express something more than just a thank you.
Now, nobody knows when the Son of Man or the Son of God is coming. So be faithful. Be faithful as a what? As a servant. Keep doing whatever God has given you to do. Don't try to line up your commitment to being a servant with when the Lord's coming and when we ought to crank it up because this is happening or that is happening and we have some kind of amateurish concept of when the Lord's going to come and we think we're experts as pertaining to prophecy and so we can just kind of maybe at the last minute we can shoot in and get the job done. But the truth is Jesus said no man knoweth or will ever know the hour or the day. There's a very complex psychological reason for this because we would have had a holy or an unholy breakdown of some sort. If we ever knew the date, everything would be flipped. So Jesus is dealing now with a very powerful psychological element, a, a certain kind of thing that is essential to keep all of us on the job. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And do it till I come and you don't know when I'm going to come. Keep on serving and fulfilling your job. You say, I get tired sometimes, Brother Mooney, but you see, our task is to keep serving, to keep having conferences and conventions, to keep planning for the future. There's no stopping place. You say, well, Brother Mooney, I heard you talk sometime about uh, maybe relocating the church or we've been talking about this from the very beginning. And so somebody says, well, we're so close to the coming of the how do you know that? First of all, there is no vacation in this service, as we say, this servant, servanthood or servicehood to God. There's no, there's no vacation. There's no time off. Because you don't know, but I do know what I ought to do every morning when I get up. I need to do what God has called me to do. And I know what a church ought to do, and you know what a church ought to do. We just keep right on serving, and we keep right on with schools and conferences and work and labor and building and planning and cleaning and doing it again and cooking and serving one another and just whatever our hands find to do, and we keep playing in the orchestra, and we keep, we keep in the choir, and we keep doing whatever we can to reach out, and if we... If we uh, see some of our friends with buses and they got to keep their buses going and maybe we ought to get some buses and stay busy because we don't know when he's coming. So let's start another Spanish church and a Russian church and an African church and let's have another women's conference and yes, we are going to crank up after we get out of school. We're going to crank it up again because we don't know what else to do except to just keep on working. So I don't want to just say thank you. I want you to see that when you serve, when you serve in this church, when you serve in the kingdom, when you give your life to missions, education, when you give your life to even a local church, there are people here that have been serving this church. I wish I could get a witness now. And I don't want to mention names, but you know, just think as I'm preaching to you right now, all the people that you can think of, how, do you realize how many funeral uh, feedings, shall we say, what would we call the funeral dinners that have taken place in the last year, probably 40, the year before that 50 some, the year before that 60 some. And some of those acts of service to people that are going through tragedy. Some of you may have heard the announcement, but you don't really get involved. And sometimes there are people that are completely outside of Calvary Tabernacle. People that have been here as, as far back as 50 years sometimes will call. I could give you the names, but I don't want to distort my what I'm trying to get across here by trying to put names in it. I, I, I'm not prepared to do all that, but Sister Mooney, there are people that have come back. Families have come back here that have not been here. I can cite you a case where not one member of the family had been here for 40 years. And yet you fixed a funeral dinner for them. And you entertained them. And some of you knew them. Most of you did not. But there was something inside their heart that says, uh, I got to get back to Calvary. I got to get back to Calvary. 
Is my, is my friend here from the Jesus house tonight? Is my